Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Max. And this is Movie Nostalgia, where we give you an honest review of the movies we've meddled with so mischievously over at Maybe Movies. And this time we will be looking at 1973's Soylent Green. This is the dystopian sci-fi film directed by Richard Fleischer, starring Charlton Heston, Chuck Connors, Lee Taylor Young, Brock Peters, and Edward G. Robinson in his 101st movie appearance, <laughs> which apparently was also his last. Oh. Yet he apparently at the time was very unwell and died, I think, before the movie came out. Oh, that's a shame. And hadn't told anyone. Oh, well, one um, of those. Yes. And, well, this is one of those ones where, unfortunately, while we try as much as possible to do uh, spoiler-free reviews, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do it with this one. It's been in, not so much in the zeitgeist, but it's been... In the culture. Yes. It's been such a big part of pop culture, especially if you if you were a fan of Futurama. It cropped up <laughs> quite a few times in there about what, what the movie is about. Yes. And it's interesting to note that the going home scene was the final scene that he ever filmed. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Mm. Creepy. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did this one, curiously enough, two years ago, which is the year that the film is set in 2022. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I'd never seen it. I, I watched this for the show. I had seen it once before, before the show, just once. It was like you, it was one of those things that was the punchline of so many jokes and things like that, that I knew about the movie long before I knew about the movie. Yes. You know, yeah. and I didn't actually get to see it. I don't think until sometime in the 90s it was on the television. Okay. You know, no particular fanfare or anything. It just happened to be on TV and I was like, I'm finally going to watch that film so I can finally see what all the fuss is about. But of course, it's such a bizarre film to watch when you, you know what the story is. Yes. Yeah, you kind of like... I've been spoiled, but somehow... But there is... Uh, that's the interesting thing about it, though. There is so much more to it. There is more. Yes, there is more to it. You know, as you say, you know, the, the, the punchline may have been spoiled, but there's so much in the setup. In fact, there's more in the setup, really, mm. than, than, than the punchline. The punchline is not quite anticlimactic, but when you step back, and especially when we step back and looking at it now, certainly even like post when the film is set... And you kind of go, oh, okay. So then you're about that then. Okay, yeah. And then you're about that then. And even more so, I think, I mean, now doing this review now, with the assisted suicide bill coming up again in oh, the God, UK. Oh, yeah. God, You know? Yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't considered that. You yeah. just kind of go, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's all there. <laughs> the pieces are coming together. Yeah, unfortunately. Ugh. <sighs> The world of tonight, uh, the, the the world of the twenty twenties is not as brim as that uh, depicted in Silent Green, but the the basic elements are there, mm -hmm. uh, culturally and societally speaking. Yeah, just uh, just to make it that little bit more prescient. Yeah, I mean, even little little things like like, like the arcade machine in the house. Mm, yes. Which again, watching it this time, that kind of almost kind of like. V v vacuous nature of certain characters mm -hmm. straight away put me in mind of things like the utopia mouse experiment oh yes yes of course yeah which if you've never seen it do it, 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 it's um it's a sobering thing <laughs> to it say is. the least yeah it is it didn't i couldn't really find any numbers for it oh okay yeah as far as i could see most of it made its it, it made its money back but mostly in rental okay that's interesting, because, I mean, I just assumed, because it was such a cultural touchstone, mm. especially in the early 80s, that I had just assumed that it must have been a quite successful film when it first came out. The only box office things that I said were, I said his box office came in at around 3.6 million or something, which was not far off the budget. Okay. Okay, so it really wasn't that much of a... No, and it's another one, by the looks of it, a lot of the popular critics at the time were very cool about it. And, like, it's a kind of B-movie sci-fi film that tries to say something. That was the kind of general gist I got. B-movie? Yeah, which is not... No, that's not a B-movie. Not you, at all. Production value's way too high. Exactly, exactly. And especially, I mean, I mean the director, um, Richard Fleischer, because I was like, I knew the name, but I couldn't think from what. 
Mm. This was quite late in his career. He had stuff going back to the 40s, but most notably from the 50s, things like 1954's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Okay. With to, uh, Kirk, Tony Curtis, with, with um, Kirk Douglas. Uh-huh. Right, okay. But also with Kirk Douglas and Tony Curtis, the Vikings in 1956. Oh, right, yeah. 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 But also as well in the 80s, both Conan the Destroyer and Red Sonja, he directed both of those. Oh, I thought I recognised that name and now I know why. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Although he did do some turkeys as well. Apparently he did um, Amazon, uh, Amazon. Amazon? Why am I thinking? Amityville 3D. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is a little bit of a turkey. Yeah, he was. Very, I think he was nominated for a raspberry at one point. I don't I don't think it was for that. It was for something else. I don't know what. I was going to say, I mean, it's, it's a bit of a turkey, but it's not that bad. No. <laughs> no. No, no. But yeah, I think it's your turn. <laughs> To do, to do the plot okay. for those who've never, who don't know this. Yeah, so for those of you who've never seen this film, which might might well be quite a few of you out there, I mean, it's, it isn't the most famous film. It's, it's known for its punchline more than it is known as a film. Well, it's interesting that you said you watched it on TV. I mean, that's part of the reason why I never saw it, was because I never saw it on TV. No, that was the first time I ever saw it. It was on a late night screening. It was mm. like one in the morning or something like that. So I just stayed up and watched it. Set in... It, a fictional version of 2022 where overpopulation and climate change have radically changed the way that human beings live. The story set in New York, which at this point in time has a population in excess of 40 million. And we follow the adventures of Detective Thorne, a policeman in this future society, as he investigates the untimely death of a rich man and the people that surround him. Mm-hmm. He comes to suspect that there is some sort of conspiracy afoot. That's enough music for now, lads. <laughs> Looks like there's dirty work afoot. And he's determined to uncover exactly what it is. And discover what is the secret of Silent Green. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's one, as I said, it, you know, it's echoed through, you know, through pop culture ever since its release. Mm. And again, obviously, we know we mentioned... Futurama. I'll have the Soylent Green with a slice of Soylent Orange and some Soylent Coleslaw. If you've seen Cloud Atlas or read Cloud Atlas, I'm assuming it's in the book as well. You've read the book, haven't no, you? No, I haven't read Cloud Atlas, no. no. I've oh. seen the film, but not, yeah. never read the book. Yeah, it crops up in there. And again, this is based on a book, based on a novel uh, by uh, Harry Harrison. Very well-known sci-fi writer from the, from the 50s, 60s. Although my understanding of it is the film has very little to do with the book. I mean, not even the title. The, the, the book itself was called Make Room, Make Room. Oh, of course, yeah. It is set in New York. I think the population is similar. I think it might be slightly less, but it's about the same number. Mm. There is... A Soylent as a product exists in the book. Which makes sense. Yes, because it, it's supposed to be yet this new food stuff that's a, a combination of soy and lentils. Ah, Right, okay. Yeah. But my understanding that the book follows... It's almost like a day in the life of a series of characters within this world. Okay. So okay. it's like it starts with one person's character. And I think at some point, each of the characters has some kind of interaction with the next character who then carries the story along. Oh, that's interesting. I think that's how it is. That is interesting. I'd, I'd, I, might be, I might be interested in having a look at that then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting to see you know, the, the, the differences. Although it did freak me out. Because I work, you know, I work in a hospital. <laughs> I went to the shop at, 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 at work. Went to get a drink from the drinks chiller, and there was a product on the shelf just called Soylent. Oh no, really? There is you can there, you can, there is Soylent, Soylent exists as a company now. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's ironic, but literally, ironically, naming yourself Soylent, but at the same time kind of genius it is really it's good. it was like some kind of like um i think it was like an iced coffee or something okay like that. i don't know what it was but yeah and it was coined it was called soylent brown or something okay <laughs> so it's like no soy latte <laughs> uh but yes it's definitely worth a look if only as I, was, as I was intimating earlier it's like oh shit i knew about that stuff again made in 1973 mm-hmm. yeah you know the amount of stuff that we've grown up with and taken as as current day news it's not as current as you think. No, no, it's been around for a while, certainly. What can I say about the film? Well, it's um, it's a product of its time, and I don't mean that in the it was acceptable in the 80s kind of way. I mean, like, stylistically and visually, mm. there is a very particular aesthetic that was very common during the 70s, and this is a uh, yet another great example of it. It's, well, I say the aesthetic of the 70s, 
Again, I said earlier on, it was more like the late 60s and early 70s, because I'm also including films like Planet of the Apes and things yes. like that that had similar cinematic aesthetics to it. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! I mean, I imagine a lot of it is to do with the film stock they were using, but also the way they lit it and the types of music they were using the, to score it, them. It gives it a very grounded look. Mm, that gritty. Gritty, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And for some reason, it's... I suppose it's, again that is part of the zeitgeist of the time. All of these elements work together in the film that that give it an extra level of gravitas, and it makes you know it, it, it's believable. Yes, yeah, it's a well constructed reality, absolutely. Yeah, it's like I mean I know you mentioned Planet of the Apes is another good example, of, considering what the subject matter is of that. It still feels more low sci-fi than high sci-fi. What planet? Yeah, I suppose. I suppose I could see that. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to argue with it. Um, I enjoy the films, but I, that doesn't mean that. I, no, I suppose they are a little lower on the brow. Yeah. Region of when it when it comes to the the range of sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a bit. It's a little lower on mm-hmm. the, on, on the, in the marketplace. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. I, I don't mean so. Not, not not so much low low brow. It's it's not like a like like, like a carnival of of um of um, special effects. Oh right. Oh, I see what, I mean. what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, everything was done physically or as much as yeah. possible was anyway. And it does work. And I find, again, with this, it, it does work. It, it makes the world believable when you think of the ludicrous of it and this of it. But then... <laughs> the world they've created looks lived in and ground down and worn in. Mm. And that is the various elements of this coming together to making a, a, a nice zeitgeist. Yes. Um, There's also that slight kind of blue collar element to it as well I mean oh yeah, very much so especially with the repurposing of like the bin lorries the dump trucks oh god yeah that's that's a bit of a mm. it's almost funny the first time you see it almost and then your brain stews on the notion that this situation is being treated like literal garbage exactly Exactly. And it's like, ooh, that's that's quite grim. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. quite grim. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. There, there's there's quite a lot of grimness in this, this story. This is this is not this is a bleak vision. Oh, of absolutely. The future. For me, in terms of what I've seen, the only other film that I would say that's probably that I found as bleak as this. In fact, I think possibly some way more so is the road. I have not seen the road. I have a copy of it somewhere. If you want to borrow that, it. Viggo Mortensen? Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen it. Basically, everything is falling apart to the point that the majority of even like the topsoil has gone. It, it can't hold its nutrients anymore, so everything is dying. Oh, God, right, okay. And it's how, how you survive. <laughs> mm. If you're planning a downer evening <laughs> <laughs> and, and you want to catch up on some, on some classic 70s cinema, then definitely give this a look. Yeah. Again, as I said, you know, if you want to sort of see... How the 70s thought the um, 2020s were going to look. Give it a look. Um, I'm, I am going to give it two. You are going to give it two? I am going to give it two. Okay. I, I think, regardless of what the critics thought of it at the time, history has been kind to the film. I think that's world history has kind of vindicated it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think, I think as, a, as, a, uh, as, a warning from the, as a warning to the future... Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it two. I am just giving it... The one thumb. I think it is a classic and it is worth a solid watch. But I personally find that it has relatively limited rewatch value. It's not something that I go, ooh, let's watch Soylent Green. Uh, So for that basis, I personally can only give it the one thumb. But it's a good solid watch and worth your time. Okay. We disagree. We'll change. Mm. It does happen. It does happen, yeah. Well, uh, as it is going to be... uh, the first of December tomorrow, mm-hmm. uh, and Christmas is looming fast again. I just have to say, Sam, mm-hmm. and to the lovely people at home, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. Look after yourselves and one another, and we'll see you soon. As always, guys, TTFN. <laughs>